2 Kings chapter 9, verse 27. But when Azahiah, the king of Judah, saw this, saw that the king of Israel, Jehoram, has been killed by Jehu, he fled by the way of the garden house. Nice building, your gardens, trying to get away. And Jehu followed after him and said, smite him also in the chariot. <laughs> he's going to the garden house, he's in a chariot. Speaks how huge this place is. And they did so as the going up to Gur, which is by Ablim, Ablim. And he fled to Megiddo. Now we've been looking at the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Armageddon. That's that final battle. That's that, the, the second to last world war in the Bible. You say, well, what's the last world war? When after the millennium, Satan's released and he gets an entire group of people all together to kill Jesus, which doesn't happen. Fire comes down and boom, they're gone. But here Jehu, he's anointed. He gets on his horse. He's going after the enemies of God. And we have Megiddo showing up. This all has application to the second coming. To the, here, the the, uh, uh, the tribulation period, Megiddo. Now, Jehu is not a type of Christ 100%, but no types are 100%. And his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem. This is Azahiah, he's dead. And buried him in the sepulcher of his fathers in the city of David. In the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, began Azahiah to reign over Judah. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, this is a place up north in Israel. Jezebel, our, our darling of the Bible, heard of it. Here comes Jehu. Ooh. Let's look at her. Every We have not ever found one case where J-E-Z-E-B-E-L -E 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 has ever been to any good. At all. Nothing. She's not a good wife. She's not a good queen. She's a murderer. She has her own religion. She has her own prophet. She's just so let's see what let's see what Jezebel does to that. And she painted her face. Paint is the first time that word shows up, and the only other place it shows up is Jeremiah 22, 14. And they painted it with ver ver vermin. And that's not good. Read Jeremiah 22, 14. So when you got your makeup being painted on, you know, with, you know, brushes, you use a brush, short brushes, long brushes, pencils, eyebrow pencils. You are following the means of Jezebel. Again, that's the first time painted shows in the Bible shows up with her face. So the first time a word shows up in the Bible, it's very important. It gives us a context. And the first time painted face shows up with Jezebel. Like it or not, you'll stand before God, saved or lost. Okay? That's what the Bible says. I'm telling you what the Bible says. And tired her hair. Or excuse me, tired her head. That's the first and only time you find tired. Oh, I'm so tired. No. Oh, you know, I've been doing has been tiring. No. Now, I'm going to speculate, and you can throw it in the garbage can. There's only one hairdo that you really would look at tired. It looks like a rope. Or she's done it up and, and kind of, you know, tying. But there it is. There's mascara. There's your, your makeup world. And there's your hair being done by Jezebel. And looked out a window. So she fixed herself up for Jehu. And as Jehu entered into the gate, she said, Has Zimri peace who slew his master? 1 Kings 16. Well, get, she knows history. Zimri killed the king so he could be king. So Jehu, you're killing all these people. You're killing the king. So she's already got word that he has killed the king of Israel. 
Don't worry about Johnny on the spot and, and satellite dishes and live television of the news. She had already gotten word before Jihu shows up what he's done. News has always traveled around the world as quick as it can travel and as fast. You don't need technology. And he lifted up his face to the window, saying, who said that? And said, who is on my side? Who? And they looked out to him, two or three eunuchs, and that's the first time eunuch shows up in the Bible. It's funny how it says two or three. We don't know how many there were. At least two, maybe three. I always thought that was weird. I mean, you didn't count. But now let's see the second advent after Megiddo in verse 33. You ready? Let's go to Revelation before we read that. I think it's Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Let's read that first. Revelation 19, verse 11, before we read about Jezebel. She's an enemy of God. Always been. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. You ever kind of wonder what Jehu's horse he's riding? You ever think about that? And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Well, that's not Jehu. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. That's what Jehu is doing right now. You're the king of Israel? Yep, you're dead. You're the king of Judah? Yep, you're dead. It's what it is. It's not, not what a judge. Yet yeah, you are charged. You're guilty. His eyes were as the flame of fire. I wonder if Jehu was angry. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Pay attention to that. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed with fine linen and white and clean. And out of his mouth, Jehu this spoke, Go the sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the wine press, wine press, red color. Wine's a type of blood in the Bible. Of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God. Now, Revelation chapter 2, while we're here, I have to find this one. Revelation 2 and verse number 20. Well, verse 18, so we know it. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira. Thyatira. This is the Dark Age church. These things saith the Son of God. That's what we just read in 19. Who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire. Revelation 19. Match that with 2 Kings. And his feet are like fine brass. Revelation 1. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works. And the last to be more than the first. Well, look at that. They're, they're a working, doing church. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Got a problem with you. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Remember, we are in a dark age church. Which calls itself a prophetess. To teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. That's important. Except they repent of their deeds, and will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am. He which try which searches the reins, that's a horse, but the human, and hearts, and I will give unto every one, every one of you according to your works. 
Now, the Dark Age Church in the Dark Ages that has her children is the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Church, her children. That that church has committed adultery, fornications with the world. And when that woman sends her big ambassador over the world, they all kiss his hand or kiss his feet. And give them all kinds of airtime. Give them all kinds of things. Give them the key to the city of all things. And God says that's adultery. That's fornication. That's that Jezebel named. Now she's going to die. But her spirit hasn't died. Jezebel had a religion of prophets. So does one church. It has Baal. Baal is the sun god. So that church has little round light circles around people's head. They have the, the symbol of the sun of, in their head church in Italy, in Rome. You can get any book, proper book and learn about those things. It is during the dark ages when the Bible was closed. It was gone. It was chained. That's why it's called dark. It's the time of period when mice ran around and gave us the black play we're going to look at something like that we're not going to read it all but just take so th this is the dark age period of church and jezebel shows up and be the study of the popal church the catholic church but there she is jezebel is a great study Painted her face. Two or three eunuchs. And he said, throw her down. Verse 33. So they threw her down and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall. And on the, not horse, horses. And he trolled her underfoot. That's Jesus Christ, second advent. There it is. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink. Having fellowship with somebody. We're going to eat with drinking with Jesus and the children of Israel in their holy land. With their feast. With their harvests. And plentiful harvests they will be. You know... The curse is removed off the earth, okay, in the millennium, right? The only one that doesn't get that curse is, is the serpent. Those still eat dust. Now, picture this. When Joshua, I mean, when Moses sent spies into Canaanish Barnelia, they came back carrying a cluster of grapes upon two men. Can you imagine what the grapes are going to be when Jesus Christ has removed that curse? You're going to probably be able to do a gallon of of grape juice by one grape in front of Jesus. And can you imagine bowing your head and saying, Lord God, I thank you for this meal. What a wonderful time we're having. Lord God, so great. And can you imagine Jesus looking at him and saying, you're welcome. Is it not Jesus God? And will you not bow your head and thank the Lord for it? And then Jesus looks at you guys, you're welcome. Let's dine. That'd be interesting. So he's eating, drink, and he said, go see now this cursed woman. That religion is cursed. And her sisters. It is called a mother church, I believe. And bury her, for she's a queen. Excuse me, queen. She's a king's daughter. And that is found uh, in uh, 1 Kings 16.31. Tells about her father was a king. We're not, we won't go there. Ain't work. Go and check her family tree. And they went to bury her. But they found no more of her than the skull. And the feet. Now I know the Jolly Roger flag is the skull and the leg bones. But isn't it funny how you almost see the identification of danger and poison as in what Jezebel is left over in. And when you run that to Revelation chapter 2 verse 20, the danger, the warning sign of the Bible of the skull and two bones, there it is. It's Jezebel. 
and the palms of her hands. Now, Scripture was Scripture. Let's see something very interesting here. 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. Let's see what this woman is related to. 1 Samuel 5, 4. And this is where the mice and emeralds show up. But we're not going to... Later in chapter 5, you'll read about those mice. But 1 Samuel 5, 4, what we need tonight. This is Dagon. Dagon has a big head that, with a mouth that's open of a fish. It looks like the Pope when he turns on his side. Plenty of pictures you can do. You can Google the pictures of the with the Pope in his hat, and when you look at him sideways, it looks like a big fish's mouth being open. And you say, well, why are you reading this? 1 Samuel 5, 4. When they rose up early on the morrow, morning, Behold, Dagon, he's a fish god. So, one church has specific rules about eating fish. And all public school systems had that rule on Fridays. Isn't that a quinky dinky? Something fishy. All right. Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. Man, he's down before God. God said, hey, get down on your knees, brother. You fallen God, you get down. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hand were cut off upon the throne. That's how they left Jezebel. Isn't that interesting? Dagon's head and the palms of his, of, of his hands, there they are. So let's go back to Kings and see Jezebel. And when he would come in, he did eat and drink and said, Go and see now this cursed woman and bury her, for she's a queen, king's daughter. Keep the one say queen. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull, Dagon, and the feet, and the palms of her hand, Dagon. There's no trunk, trunk of her body. Skull and bones is left. Warning, warning, danger, danger. You can put that on the death cookie. This is not your salvation. That is danger. It's death. It's the devil's food cake. Wherefore they came again and told him and said, This is the word of the Lord, which he has spoken by the servant Elijah, the Tishvite, saying, and this is in 1 Kings 21, 23. The portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. Where did Jezebel go? Well, when she fell down, he trod her on the foot of that horse, she died. And the scoundrels, the scavengers, the dogs came and ate her. She became kibbles and in, in, in dog food. Jezebel literally became dog food. Dogs are unclean animals in the Bible. They cleaned up the garbage. I mean, they would throw garbage out in the streets and they would wash the streets away, but the dogs and, and pigs and all that would eat. So she was eaten by dogs. And there was nothing left to bury but some bones. That's not all. And the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field. There's a bad word I could use, but she has become dog dung. Dog doo-doo. You know that stuff that you step in and you got to clean your shoes off? You know that stuff where you go to dog parks and they tell you to pick up after your dog? That's what Jezebel became. She became dog crap. The final being of Jezebel, she is a bunch of crap somewhere, somewhere now that has been, you know, hardened and, and gone away of rain and weather and all that. So in the eyes of God, this religion that shows up in Jezebel in Revelation chapter 2, verse 20, it will come to crap. Upon the face of the field of the portion of Jezreel, 
so that they shall not say this is Jezebel. You can never point to the body and the thing of Jezebel. She's dog crap. She's gone. It's been decomposed. We don't even know which dog ate her. We don't know which dog. I mean, the double dog. I mean, she's just piles of crap. Over, I mean, that's the only way I can put it clean. What an end for a woman. And that's her end. And then when we go back to Revelation chapter 2, she's a church. The spirit of Jezebel is a church. So anybody of that church in the Protestant church and the Catholic church, the end of your church is your crap. Now, if God's not going to say to you in that crap, you just find the easy to say crap. Okay, yeah, crap. Depart from me, you crap. I mean, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Crap. That's what it is. And that's the end. This woman, she's killing the prophets. She scared Elijah. And I want if Elijah's in heaven. And I want what he I want wow, that's a good end. Because he prophesied it. And the prophecy of Elijah about Jezebel has happened. And if we're told what we read today, that Jesus Christ is going to mount on a horse, he's going to carry many crowns upon his head, we're going to follow him on horses, well, guess what? It's going to happen. That is that is of a surety as Jezebel became dog doo doo. Boy, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come. Amen. Amen.